tenemos para hablar de hoy una serie que está a prácticamente 12 días de irse del catálogo de Netflix. Estamos hablando de Mad Men. A Mad Men le quedan solamente 12 días para que lo saquen del catálogo. Y del otro lado lo tengo ahí esperando, expectante, a Brian Bat que eh, se va a sumar a esta conversación. And there is Brian. Now Hello. Hello. How are you, Brian? So what? I'm not on camera, right? You are on camera. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, I'll take but you look good. You look good. Don't worry about it. You look good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is to to have fun a little. I know that you have plans for later tonight. So the yeah, idea no is. No problem. Just... No problem. Okay. Okay. So we 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 are like loosening up a little. We want to know about. What uh, you are doing? They say, "Bueno, okay." <laughs> They say Brian empieza a, a relajarse, toma un traguito. Let's talk about your future project. That it's uh, this movie called Good Samaritan that I learned yeah, I, just yesterday. I did a um, I did a movie for the producer, a kind of horror, crazy horror movie for the producer called um, Darlin, and I played this evil, evil bishop. It was horrible, and they were filming in the area, and they needed. Once again, another clergyman. So this time, a nice one. It's a small scene. It's one scene, but I had this big sermon. Um, but it was great to work with them again, and, and um, the same costume designer did it. So it, it was, you know, it was fun. Uh, a lot of pretty people in that in that movie. I'm like, I was watching, them going, wait, did they just like rob a modeling agency? Because they're all gorgeous. Um, what else? Oh, right when all this happened, right when the COVID, you know, the, the pandemic happened. I was in New York rehearsing a play that was supposed to go to Hartford, try out at Hartford, then Toronto, then possibly Broadway. And it was a stage version of the King's Speech. I don't know if you've seen the film. Yeah. Um, and I played Lionel Logue, the uh, speech therapist. So it was a really big role, something that I never, I mean, something that I actually thought, oh, this isn't really, you know, in my wheel box. This is not something I usually do. And it was my husband that said, you're doing this. You're taking the challenge and you're going to do it. And that's why, you know, that's why we've been together 31 years because he knows me and he says, you know, Mr. Actor, go to improve yourself. Anyway, um, it was going great. I mean, it, it, the rehearsals, it was a joy. The, I was replacing someone who had to leave that out to go do a film. And uh, it was going great. I mean, it was one of the best things I think I've ever done in my life. Let me and then like boom, this. this. But come on, every, it's been a lot worse for other people. But we did, um, we did uh, a Zoom reading of it uh, night before last, and it went miraculously well. Uh, the playwright's happy, very happy, the producers. And so we'll see. The good thing about it is that they have a full production. We were teched, lit, costumed, ready to go. A whole new production of a wonderful, wonderful play that, that really deals with um, doing the right thing against uh, great odds, uh, dignity, honor, integrity, uh, eloquence, and using the right words. Um, something that we could use right now. Yeah. Especially yeah. in my country. <laughs> let, let, let me translate this for the people that is joining us. That, oh, I'm that sorry. Maybe, they, no, no, it's okay. They may not know how to speak in English or maybe they don't understand all what you're saying. So let me translate that. Dice Ryan que... Eh, estuvo trabajando toda una pequeña escena en esta película que se llama Good Samaritan, preguntaban por ahí quién la dirige, la dirige Jeffrey Reddick, que es el creador de la saga de Destino Final, dice que ahí interpreta a un eh, obispo malvado, dice que no puede creer el, el papel que le toca hacer acá, y que también, aprovechando con todo esto del, del tema de la pandemia, del encierro, del, del, del coronavirus, del COVID-19, COVID-19, uh, as you call it, uh, ya, está haciendo eh, una obra de teatro basada en la, lo que fue la misma película del discurso del rey, que ahí interpreta a Lionel y que están eh, haciendo algunas, eh, algunas preparaciones a través de Zoom, que él al principio por ahí no estaba muy seguro, pero que eh, el esposo fue el que lo convenció y que justamente por eso están hace tanto tiempo juntos. Because your husband is the one that convinced you to do the things that you're doing right now. So uh, there's a lot of people saying hi to you, saying that they love you, that oh, they miss you. Oh, let me put on you. my glasses, because <laughs> it's I, that I time of day in life. Well, thank yeah. you. Um, you know, I, I, okay, I, I, was, I was really getting in, very impressed with you because you remembered all that. Then I saw that you were reading, you were able to, it's, it's written down. Um, but I just, I just realized I speak un, peque, un poquito español. Y um, it be COVID-19. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, anyway, I have a little story about, I, I mean, I, 
I took Spanish in school and I was really, I was a bad student, admittedly. Um, yo soy estudiante malo, malo estudiante. Uh, Why is it in Spanish? Pero uh, um, in mi escuela, I, I, grad, I graduated. I don't know how to say that. Me gradué, me gradué. Me gradué. Uh, y, uh, pero my español, mm, más good. Muchos años pasado, muchos años pasado, uh, es, uh, yo estoy hablando en the, uh, les, el cerrado ceremonio de los Olympic, Olímpicos en Barcelona. Yeah. And, sí, and todos los uh, actores, o uh, bailar, bailar, bueno, uh, actores, Bailarines. Uh, hablan nunca español. And we got lost. I don't know how to say that. We got nos lost. Perdimos. And all of a sudden, um, yo conozco, reco, reco, reconozco, me doy cuenta. Reconozco, sí. Um, la derecha, izquierda. <laughs> and I got everyone home uh, to the hotel. So, <laughs> a mu a, a, muchos años pasado, uh, I, I bumped into, I don't know, I ran into uh, my, my, my Spanish teacher. Te and, con sí, and uh, I told her the story and she was, she was very proud. <laughs> ok, dice que le contó esta historia que le pasó en los Juegos Olímpicos, que estaba con un montón de bailarines y demás y que de golpe se perdieron y él se acordó cómo era, ninguno hablaba eh, en inglés eh, perfecto, así que él lo fue orientando eh, con, lo que, con lo poco que sabía español y que le contó esta historia a su profesora de eh, español eh, someone here is pricing your Spanglish because we have oh. this <laughs> we have this idea of mixing English and Spanish is Spanglish that's a new language we should know los dos uh, languages per, por, porque uh, we are so uh, close you know yeah. Sp uh, Spanish is so talked all over the world I think more, even more than English See, and um, the, it's a romance language. Yeah. You know, it's, it's deriv everything's derivative from the romantic languages. And you, know, you can get by. It's, the, what kills you, though, is my brain's not my... Uh, well, it's, yeah. It's not rápido. <laughs> no rápido. It's, it's, it's a matter of practice. You have to practice speaking sí. in Spanish, sí. and, and, you, and you get there. Uh, porque es southern, the bajo, yeah. everything is más slow. Yeah. <laughs> But here in Argentina we speak so fast. Yes. We speak really fast. Hablamos muy rápido. Yeah. 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 So we have to like slow it down a bit so you can understand. So my uh, husband, Thomas, we uh, met in um, Akron, Ohio, doing Evita, the musical okay. Evita, about Eva yeah. Perón, and, uh, and 31 years ago. And so. I've been always wanted to go to Argentina. You have to come. You have a lot of fans here. I'd love to. Yeah. I have several friends that they make a pilgrimage yearly to tango. Well, you have to do it. Now you can't because everything is shut down, but you, you have to come here to visit One. and dance tango. And you have to maybe do a, maybe some scenes from Evita <laughs> with your husband. <laughs> <risa> Dice que conoció al marido, a Thomas, eh, en la obra hace 30 años, haciendo eh, Evita, y que tiene amigos que han venido acá a Argentina a bailar eh, a tango, a practicar tango, que él todavía no ha podido venir. Uh, as, you can, as you can read, some people is praising and is happy to see you. <risa> That's my cousin. <risa> ok, so let's say hi to the family. <risa> yes. Hola so, la familia. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about because the thing is Netflix is going to pull out Mad Men from their catalog in 12 days from now. Uh -huh. It's oh, going really? to be up. Uh, yeah, we have it for like maybe five years. I don't know how long we have Mad Men in Netflix. And on June uh, the 12th is going to, or t no, the, t the 10th, el 10 de junio, it's going to be out of Netflix. So this is the idea to discuss a bit about the show, to oh, sure. remember a little about this. Uh, first of all, let us know what's the first thing that you think of when you think of Mad Men. ¿Qué es lo primero que pensas? Ah, the one of the, the best professional artistic experience of my life. So far. yeah, so yeah, so far. Uh, it was it was the first 
de, uh, el primero televisión pilot um, yo rec me, me recuerdo o filmed uh, y um, nadie uh, conozco right conozco más con sí y right. Camille uh, what would happen ah uh, nadie sabía nadie sabía que sí, iba a pasar no sabía no no and woo, it, uh, it just grande 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 yeah. grande and we, it, it was so much fun it really was but the product the the story the filming the artistry the scripts everything was top notch it was it was the, the best of the best and um one thing i realized early on in filming is that um the producer and, and the they never were going to let us look bad yeah. they never so it made it, we trust it and um they trusted us so that for an actor is the biggest gift i think you can get you know that you have that feeling to you know that you are free and and you are supported ya, yeah. bueno, dice que cuando lo empezaron a hacer, el golpe empezó a crecer, a crecer y se hizo cada vez más grande y más grande, y que ellos tenían la confianza en los productores y en la gente que estaba a cargo de la serie, en que no los iba a hacer quedar mal. Y que dice que fue una de las, exper una de las experiencias más lindas que le tocó dentro del mundo de la actuación. Someone is asking you, why Salva didn't come back? Uh, oh. When, she, when he left the show, why didn't he come back? Because we expect him to come back. Well, everyone did. And I think Matthew Weiner, the creator, Um, I think he likes to sometimes torture the audience. <laughs> you know, not, not in a bad way, but it keeps you watching. You know, yeah. it keeps you wanting. And sometimes in life and across the board, things have to hurt a little bit. You know, uh, there's a great quote from The Fantastics, a musical, The Fantastics, called, Without the Hurt, the Heart is Hollow. And um, I know that's a big statement for a little thing about a TV show and a character. But, you know, I think the character was a lot more beloved than anyone thought yeah. uh, he was going to be. Um, and this was the tra trajectory of the character from the beginning. I didn't know it, but this is what was, you know, scheduled to happen. And I think it was supposed to be the first season, and they decided to keep me more. Uh, but, you know, Matthew it was such, he writ wrote me off so well that I think it was even more difficult to even write. It, he couldn't top it. I, maybe he could, you know, but I'm just thinking it was so, for the audience, it was so devastating in a way and so wrong in this day and age, you see what happened to him and what his life, who knows what his life was going to be. And I think you, sometimes our imaginations are sometimes better than just being spoon fed. So who knows, I'm praying, I'm just little, little little candle lit in the back of my head that there'll be a movie and we'll, we'll see the people 10 years or whatever later yeah who, who knows i mean i've been asked you know what 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 do we think sal was doing now or i have know, a question here <laughs> oh really i like see i'm a positive person i'm uh, you know and, and you know and we always used to joke um in el mundo de la madmen not not a happy place It's, yeah. you know, it's very dark. No es feliz, triste. No triste, es mucho triste. Y um, I think, in, in, uh, but I'm no triste, you know. But, the, if the glass ha is half empty, let's add some wine. Yeah. Um, but I, I would like to think that he realized his, his inclination and his true desires and um, followed that path. The, some of the um, people that were advising the... the writers on storylines and what happened and in that period and you know there was a gay I'm a gay man who actually a lot of the things that happened to Sal actually happened to him and later in his life he he had, he had children he divorced his wife he and his wife are best friends and he's good friends with the new her her husband the kids are it all worked out yeah and I believe you know love is love um And for whatever reason, mistakes are made or we try to be something we're not in society or whatever. When, when you're coming from a good place, when you're coming from a loving, kind, accepting place, you can work stuff out. Yeah, let me, let me translate all, all, at least a part of the things that you've been saying. 
first of, dice primero que eh, fue muy difícil que en realidad a Matt Weiner, el productor, el creador de la serie, le gusta torturar a la audiencia y por eso decidió, era algo que ya se sabía desde el principio, que él no lo sabía, pero ya era la línea, el arco temporal que iba a seguir el personaje de Salva, entonces se sabía que lo iban a sacar y que él cita una obra que se llama The Fantastics, una obra de teatro, dice que sin el dolor el corazón está vacío, es, está hueco, y esto tiene que ver con que necesitamos un poco del sufrimiento. Él se imagina, porque siempre le preguntan qué fue de la vida de Salva, se imagina una película 10 años después de Mad Men, que Mad Men es un lugar eh, muy triste, que no, no hay felicidad en el mundo de Mad Men, pero que bueno, él es una persona muy feliz, y que había mucha gente eh, que aconsejaba, esta gente que se suele pedirle consejos, se suelen consultar al momento de escribir un guión, le, había gente eh, volcando su historia personal, el caso de su personaje era homosexual, y había un, una persona homosexual que estaba casada, que se separó, y que tiempo después esa ex esposa se convirtió en su mejor, no sé si su mejor, pero se hicieron amigos y se lleva bien con toda la familia. Basically, I think I just summed up all the things that you <laughs> said me <laughs> the best I could. It was my best. You did a wonderful <laughs> job, a wonderful <laughs> job. So, uh, so how, how, how often do people ask you about Salva, about what happened to him, about the show? You know, while it was on the show, uh, while we were filming, it took a while for it to catch on. But once it did, it was constant, daily. Um, not as much while we were filming in LA. You know, I think in LA and in New Orleans, believe it or not, people are a little, you know, they give people their space. Because LA is filled with actors. You bump into them all the time. Yeah. New Orleans, believe it or not, there's a lot of filming going on here. So, and, and New Orleanians are, are kind of cool and laid back, and they're not, they're not going to bother people, you know. Um, however, anywhere else, airports, New York is very weird. People will come up, you became up. That's where most people would stop me on the streets of New York. And my favorite was uh, a young man on Madison Avenue stopped me and um, said, oh, in my country, the Mad Men is huge. I can't do the accent. And I said, really, where's your country? He goes, Qatar. And I was like, okay, all right. Um, so that's when I went, wow, this is cool. Uh, a lot of people did ask what's going to happen, and I just feel like, I don't know. I have yeah. no idea. Because there were years, because I was told that, you know, who knows what could happen. So for the duration of the, the series, there was a possibility I could come back. Yeah. Uh, although it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like, the funny thing is, you're still talking about it. You're still yeah. asking that question. So I think Matt was right, in a way. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, I hadn't heard from Matt in a while. And during the COVID thing, and you might be able to find this online, but um, a dear friend of our families and a friend of my dear friend of my mom's and just great family friends, she, uh, her name is Bubbles. Well, her real name is Marilyn, but we call her Bubbles. Bubbles. And, Bubbles. Yeah, and she, um, she's recently had some health problems, but she developed uh, COVID-19 and was hospitalized. Now she's 86 years old, and, but she survived and she came out. And her grandson, who was at just, he just graduated medical school, was taking care of her. And he called and he said, you know, I just, I don't know what to do, I need something to cheer her up. And I said, well, all I can do is I can come over and sing a song from the curb, you know? So I did. And Chris, they did, the news did a piece on it and people started sharing it and it kind of went viral in a way. And Christina Hendricks saw it, she goes, I'm sharing this, honey. And then Matt called me out of the blue and said, that's the nicest thing. And I went, you know, I didn't even think of it. I just, you know, sometimes you just got to, you have to do what your heart tells you to do. And, 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 and also have that, make sure your heart is telling you the right thing to do. You know, if, it, if it's something kind or positive, don't question it. Yeah. If it's negative, stop it. But if it's yeah. positive, yeah, I don't care what people think. If, if I was off key or, or, or whatever, I was, I did what I did. I did and and it, it, it made her day. She was so happy, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, I think if, and, and look, I can't do much. I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, a healthcare professional. I'm not an essential worker now. But if we can do anything to alleviate the monotony or the, um, I, today, they, I did, I read stories to children. Uh, they videoed me doing, reading stories to children for Children's Hospital. And there's a big thing called Give Nola Day in New Orleans where 
there's a foundation that matches donations that are given to all different kinds of nonprofits. And I've done like several videos for them. But I just think this in, 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 in complete generality, if everybody did what they could do to help out, the world would be a better place. Uh, let, let me translate all of this. Okay. Uh, first of all, there's people from Mexico saying hi to you. Uh, Hola. <laughs> Hola Mexico. Dice Salva, bueno, Salva, dice Ryan que eh, estábamos preguntando cuáles eran las preguntas que más le hacían o dónde era que lo reconocían más. Dice que obviamente en Los Ángeles todo el tiempo se cruzan con actores, que no le pasa tanto a Nueva Orleans, pero que tiene un recuerdo de alguien en Nueva York que una vez le dijo, tu, tu show, tu serie es muy conocida en nuestro país. Él no se dio cuenta cuál era el acento y esta persona dijo que era Qatar. Y empezamos a hablar un poco del coronavirus de vuelta, del COVID. Habló de una amiga, de la, una señora que es amiga de la familia, que tiene 87 años, que eh, de golpe eh, con, se contrajo eh, coronavirus, que por suerte le, se pudo curar, se pudo, pudo estar bien, y que eh, le preguntaron a él qué podría hacer para eh, aliviar el día o para que ella esté mejor, y que él se propuso irle a cantar al hospital, porque sí, porque si podemos hacer algo que esté bueno, lo hacemos, es, esa es la idea. Fue a cantarle, eso lo filmaron, se viralizó, lo compartió Cristina Hendrix, eh, lo llamó Matt Weiner de la nada para decirle, che, buenísimo lo que hiciste, y justamente lo que está diciendo es eso, el mensaje es, si podemos hacer algo bueno, hagámoslo, que eh, es, lo, es lo poquito, un poco de lo que podamos hacer va a estar siempre, ver, va a estar siempre bien. We, we can change the world with maybe little steps, little things that we can do from our places. Uh, in this case, we are entertaining the people that is watching the interview, that is remembering the show, uh, and you were telling us all this cute, these nice anecdotes about the show and about the things that happened to you in your life. Uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about how many of these actors, of these uh, people from the cast do you keep in touch with? You mentioned Christina Hendricks and you oh, mentioned yeah. Matt Weiner. She's my buddy. Uh, yeah. um, you know, I also keep very close, to, in, in close, con close contact with um, uh, Janie Bryant, the costume designer. Uh, the other guys and gals, we, we email once in a while, we bump into each other. Uh, you know, it, it, it's very typical, whether you're in a play, a musical on Broadway or a play or whatever, you know, you you're become a close family very quickly, you know, because you're with each other all the time. Yeah. And, and then when you're separated, it, it, it's interesting to see who sticks, you know, what, what friendship sticks. And we all, you know, we're friends. But, yeah. you know, we, 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 you know, it depends on who you're going to hang out with, you know, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm also in New Orleans. So maybe if I was in Los Angeles or New York, I'd see everybody, I'd see other people more. Yeah, bueno, dice que sí, es muy amigo de Cristina Hendrix y que cada tanto se mandan algún mail con el resto del cast, que lo que está bueno es eso, ver una vez que termina todo, porque cuando están haciéndolo son todos amigos, pero qué pasa cuando termina la serie. If you have to talk about your favorite moment of the show, the one, maybe for you or maybe for the whole show, for the whole, the six or seven seasons that the show had. Maybe you can talk about Salva or you can talk about the whole show. If you have to point one wow. favorite moment. Well, it's, there's so many. I must say there's so many. Um, uh, off, off screen, I'll never forget the first, when we went, when we won the um, Screen Actors Guild, Guild Award. Uh, the Screen Actor Guild Awards, and it won for, we won for Best Ensemble, the entire cast won. And, you know, it was the Screen Actor Guild Awards, this great dinner party. And there's wine, and everyone's having a great time. And that during intermission, you know, during, um, I'm sorry, when there's a commercial break, you know, you run to the bar, you see. So I saw, I bumped into Jane Krakowski, who was on 30 Rock. Well, we did our first Broadway show together, uh, the Starlight Express. And we like see each other across the room, like running to each other, hugging, you know, all that. And then all of a sudden they say, ladies and gentlemen, you get to your seats. We're about to go back on air. And I'm rushing back to my seat. And I can't remember what cast it was. Someone stood up and their chair bumped into me and literally catapulted me into the arms of Meryl Streep. Oh. I know. I know. Right? Yeah. You know, I'm like, I almost knocked Meryl Streep down. I'm like this, and she catches me. And, I, <laughs> and, I, and she looks at me and she goes, I love Mad Men. My husband and I watch it every Sunday. And I went, I thought, I can die a happy man now. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know? I, yeah. <laughs> bueno, está contando una anécdota de durante la entrega de los premios SAG del Sindicato de Actores, 
que en un inter... ellos fueron como nominados como mejor elenco, que se fue hasta la barra, se encuentra con Jane Krakowski, que era de 30 Rock, y que aparte habían trabajado juntos en Broadway, termina el corte comercial, tienen que volver todos a sus lugares, él vuelve corriendo, alguien se levanta de su silla, él tropieza con su, su silla y cae en los brazos de Meryl Streep, que le dice, amamos Mad Men con mi esposo, lo vemos todos los fines de semana. This is a great anecdote, we didn't know about your relationship, this was... Did you keep in touch with her after this? No. no, no, no. <laughs> I wish we did. Um, no, she's divine. Uh, yeah. And one of my favorite moments, one of my favorite actresses, and she's also one of my dearest friends, is Patricia Clarkson. And um, I remember she, when she called, she had seen it for the first time. She goes, and she's, she's from New Orleans, and she goes, hot damn, buddy. You just knocked it out of the park. It was like... Was like this after the anecdote with Mary Streep? Pardon? Or after... When was this? That was before. That was when the first thing aired. You know, it was really interesting because Mad Men was the first basic cable show of HBO quality. Um, it was the kind of series that you had to pay for, you know, and this was, you got it with basic cable. You didn't have to pay for it, really. And, and but the odd thing is, it was on a network, AMC, that had no original programming. They were known for, here in the States, they were known for playing old movies. And all of a sudden, this you know, series, and every, while we were filming it, we said, is it ABC or is it A, uh, A, what is it? You know, AMC, no one's gonna see this. And to be honest, to be honest, it was the critics and the press that catapulted our show to notoriety because Our numbers, from what I've been told, the first season were not that great. But the reviews and 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 the, the smarts of, of Matt Weiner and the, uh, Charlie uh, Charlie Collier at AMC and uh, Scott Hornbacher, the producer, to stick with it because they knew something. Now now they're inventing networks to put co content on with Netflix and Apple and you know Amazon and all these things. Yeah. That didn't exist. We, yeah. we actually were the first, and the second was Breaking Bad on AMC. Yeah, and you have The Walking Dead as well, I think, from Yes, AMC. Walking Dead was right after that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bueno, está diciendo que eh, hasta ese momento no había ninguna serie con calidad de la que vemos, por ejemplo, eh, en HBO, que era un canal que en ese momento era lo que vendría a ser para nosotros canal de aire. Esos, eh, la calidad que se estaban logrando con Mad Men era parecido a lo que lograbas en un cable pago que eh, incluso los, los números de la primera temporada no eran tan buenos, pero que los productores, no era absolutamente a todos, estaban convencidos de que lo que estaban haciendo estaba bien y que siguieron apostando a eso. Y hoy, eh, hay tener, hoy tenés un millón de lugares como Netflix, como Amazon, lo que se te ocurra, que eh, piden todo el tiempo contenidos. En ese momento no era tan común, no era lo que pasaba. Después de Mad Men vino Breaking Bad, le menciono también eh, The Walking Dead. What do you miss the most of those times? If you have to say. You want the truth? Yeah. I'll give you the truth. <laughs> I Always. miss the camaraderie and I miss the work. I miss filming these beautifully written, complex scenes with great lines and great costumes and great sets, creating a story that people respect and that move them and then intrigue them. Um, you know, I'm an actor. So I want to play really great parts and do great work. And a lot of time you don't get to do that. You have to pay the bills. And sometimes you do what comes along. Like this play, you know, The King's Speech. It's, yeah. It was a godsend. I, I've, I've written this one man show called Dear Mr. Williams about Tennessee Williams and myself growing up in New Orleans and how he inspired me and blah, blah, blah. Maybe you'll see it one day. Now the director, I worked with the director for that In, in LA in Grey Gardens for the premiere of Grey Gardens in LA, the musical. And his name is Michael Wilson. And then he decided to, he wanted to direct my one man show. And then out of the blue, he called me to do this, this wonderful uh, play, um, uh, The King's Speech. But that, that is what I miss. You know, I'll be honest with you. Going to the Emmys and watching the show win the Emmy and, and all that glamour, glamour stuff. It's fun, but it's work. And people don't want to realize that. And, it's, and as men, we have it easier because we just have to put on a tuxedo 
Yeah, you can do a little, you know, play with it here and there, dinner jacket, whatever. The women are scrutinized and it is so unfair and unkind. I will tell you, at one of the Emmys we were, because at the Emmys and any of these award things, you know, if you leave to go to the men's room or the ladies' room or go outside to have a drink or whatever, if you don't make it back by, by, by the time they come to commercial, by, out of commercial, they put a filler in your seat. So it doesn't yeah. look like it's empty. So I was sitting on the stairs, me, Tom, and some other people, and Drew Barrymore. And it was the year that she did the, the HBO movie of Grey Gardens. And she was stellar in that. Um, and she looked like a goddess. She, and she looked beautiful. And she had this beautiful kind of big tool, you know, uh, blush kind of gown. And, and all the guys were going, you look amazing. They trashed her on the red carpet. Trashed her. And I'm like, you know, some things don't photograph as well as they are live or whatever. But I mean, you know, no one's, you know, how do we, what, what is that about? I mean, really, yeah. what is that about? We're, we're judging people about what they wear, walking down a red carpet. You know, it's kind of ridiculous, but it is fun. I will say <laughs> sometimes it's fun. The parties are fun, but it's the work. It is the work. And, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, you know, to get to do great work at that level. And, and the one thing I, I'm very proud of, and I'll pat myself on the back about this, <laughs> is that I realized it at the time and enjoyed every second of it. Let me translate that. So, this, dice que lo que más extraña es la camaradería y el trabajo, por supuesto, que los, los guiones, todas las historias eran muy buenas y que sí, obviamente, todo el mundo piensa en los semi, los Grammy, la, la, todo lo que tiene que ver con los premios, pero no se dan cuenta de todo el trabajo que hay detrás. Y muchas veces lo que pasa con eso es, eh, por ejemplo, a las mujeres cómo las critican. Cita el caso de Drew Barrymore, que había hecho un laburazo con una película de HBO que estaba súper bien vestida y de golpe eh, la mataron en la alfombra roja porque, no sé, algo no había gustado el vestido. Todo el tiempo eso se critica. Y que algo que él res rescata de lo que fue su visión en el momento de su carrera es que se dio cuenta en el momento. Él lo pudo disfrutar mientras lo estaba haciendo y por eso él dice que eh, un poco se siente orgulloso de haberse dado cuenta. There's people here asking if you know any Argentinian movie, Argentinian director, anything related to our industry. I wish I did. I bet I do, but I don't know they're from Argentina. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I've been so out of the loop for a while. I, I really should go. What would you recommend? Um, some great Argentine films, recent, recent ones I should watch. Okay. So last week I talked uh, with Mira Furlan from Lost and mm -hmm. we talked about uh, Relatos Salvajes. I don't oh. know the English name from this. This is Damien Cifron. We talk about Lucrecia, Mar Lucrecia Martel, uh, you mm. have The Headless Woman, La Mujer Sin Cabeza, you have, uh, oh, I don't know the English names for the movies, but I can, right. uh, I can send you them can, to you after this. Yeah, message them to me. And I'll, I, 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 I will. I just got, okay, I broke down and got a big TV. We don't, I don't, I mean, we didn't have a TV for a long time. It's just okay. not what we do. Uh, believe me, I haven't seen like a lot of the episodes of Mad Men since, since they first aired. Some I haven't even seen. It's I can't I can't stand watching myself. I really hate, yeah. I hate I hate the way I look. I hate the way I sound. I really you know I'm critiquing everything about me. I'm worse than the, the critics on the red carpet. Um, <laughs> but I really love. Um, foreign films, and I don't mean foreign just because it, film is film, but I love seeing and experiencing other cultures and their take on the world and humanity. And, you know, uh, like one, one of my favorite, I have several favorite foreign films was, you know, Cinema Paradiso, which I just, I don't know if you've seen that. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just moved me. So, and there's so many of them. There's so many of them. Babette's Feast. I'm, I'm going way back way back you know and then look look what won this year the, the oscars you know how incredible is that you know who would have thought um but you know I, uh, who knows i don't know what's yeah. next i'm hoping something good yeah let me translate this uh dice que recién ahora se compró un tele que hace mucho que no miraba nada que le cuesta mirarse a él porque es muy crítico consigo mismo peor dice que los críticos de la alfombra roja de los que hablábamos eh, hace un rato eh, bueno, obviamente le estuve recomendando algunas películas o algunos directores en realidad argentinos. Habló de que, por ejemplo, me cita el caso de Cinema Paraíso como una de las películas que más le gusta. Le gusta 
la película no porque sea una película extranjera, como les solían decir, sino porque es, es ver cómo otros países tienen, eh, de, qué, de qué forma cuentan historias eh, en otros países, pero que están todo el tiempo viendo esas cosas. Y, por ejemplo, cita el caso de lo que fueron los últimos Oscars con eh, Parasite. No menciona a Parasite, pero sí lo que significó, lo loco que fue que Parasite haya ganado. What was the last thing that you saw? The last movie that maybe shook you? The last movie that yeah, I the... saw. Oh my God. You know, movie, I hate to say this. I'm really bad. I'm bad. The last movie I saw was The Two Popes and I loved oh, it. It's not that old. It's less than one year. Oh, well, how brilliant was that film? I mean, well, you know, hello. The Pope. We have the Argentinian Pope there. Hello. And he's a great guy. We like him. What well, well, can you tell me about the, the guy that played the Argentinian, the, the, the younger Pope, uh, Juan Minujín? He's yes, the younger. Yes. What can you tell wonderful. me about his performance? Oh, brilliant. I, I loved everything about it. I, I, I saw a screening of it in New York while I was working on my play, Dear Mr. Williams. And I, I'm invited to some of these screenings and it was beautiful. And everyone, and usually you go to these things and it's all film people that are like, mm, snobby mm -hmm. asses. And everyone was so moved. And it doesn't matter what your religion is. It's, it, it is a story about two men coming together of different ideals or similar ideals with different opinions or different, you know, uh, interpretations yeah. and finding a common ground. And I think, especially in my country right now, we need to find a common ground because yeah. we are being ripped apart. And I hate that. I really do. And so many people work at pulling apart when if you just put that energy into putting everyone together, God, it would be so better. It's such a better place. I, I don't understand the energy that people put out for negativity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nothing can come of that. Nothing yeah. good can come of that. Yeah. Bueno, dice que la última que vio fue Los Dos Papas. Obviamente me señala porque acá en Argentina Los Dos Papas, uno de ellos es argentino, destaca la, lo que fue el trabajo de Juan Minujín en las partes más jóvenes y habla de esto, de eh, la historia y cómo teníamos dos posturas diferentes, ¿no? la de Bergoglio y la de Benedicto, y que la, el objetivo de la película es mostrarnos que se puede encontrar un punto en común y que es algo que necesitan en este momento en Estados Unidos, buscar un punto en común, que no, que no haya tanta confrontación constante, todo el tiempo peleándose, es necesario eso. Just to finish, let's uh, read a few of the questions or maybe the messages that people is uh, sending sure. here. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, because we've been speaking for like 45 minutes. That's Can I ask you time. one question? Yeah. How did your hair, get, how, did you get a haircut? No, I, I cut it myself. You did? Okay, because yeah. I need one. It's ridiculous. <laughs> no, the, the, the thing is, if I turn around, you're going to see all the holes in my hair. Okay. <laughs> But I cut it myself. I oh, have you did a good job. Yeah, I'm proud of, but, but I have too, ma too much hair, I think. Ah. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's see a few of the questions here. Someone is, uh, there's people saying how incredible it was Mad Men. Uh, someone is recommending you Nine uh, Queens, Nueve Reinas. That's another movie from us. I'm going to send it that to you in, in, okay, a, in, great. A, in a text. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's Muchas gracias. You Yeah, you have to see that one. Uh, people praising Drew Barrymore, uh, asking you if the anecdote that you told was the year that she wore the green dress. Is Pardon? that the, What dress? The, the, the green is the year that no, she wore No, no, it was like a blush, pale, pale pink color. And it was a big, you know, almost 50s looking ball gown. Yeah. Dice que no era el vestido verde, alguien que haya preguntado. Uh, well, people is praising the anecdote again with Meryl Streep. They are happy <laughs> with that. Uh, okay, uh, asking... may I say something about Meryl Streep? Um, because uh, Christina Hendricks' husband, or ex-husband, should I say, had worked with her before. And, you know, and I told Christina the, the story, and she's like, honey, that's Meryl. That's how she is. She is so down to earth and so kind. It's, it's, it's such a great thing when you, someone who's a genius, one of the most the, the most brilliant actress of our generation is a good person don't you love that yeah 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 well this dice que eh, Cristina Hendrix que hoy dijimos que era muy amiga de él el ex esposo de Cristina trabajó con Meryl y que cuando él le contó la anécdota esta a Cristina Cristina dijo 
Así es Meryl. Esa es Meryl que es, tiene los pies en la tierra, es súper amable, súper agradable, por más de que sea una estrella, es una buena persona. Y eso es lo increíble. They are asking you about Scream, the TV show. What can oh. you tell us about this show that you had a role there too? It was fun. Um, the reason why I did it was it was a job, uh, but also it filmed here in New Orleans and, and, in the, and around the area. So while we were filming, I got to sleep in my own bed and I loved it. Um, I had a lot of fun on that show. Um, you know, everyone talked about, you know, how uh, everyone, uh, the main characters, all these young, hot looking, you know, and everyone said, oh, they're going to be trouble. You know, they're going to be trouble on the set. And they weren't because they knew at any moment they could get killed and their job would be over. <laughs> you know, so they were yeah. great, but they were great. They were great young actors. They yeah. were really great young actors. And um, you know, eventually my character, I knew, I was like, just let me know because I have some other offers and I want to know if I can take. That's basically how I got to do Great Gardens in Los Angeles because I went to the producers and I said, look, I know I'm going to get whacked <sighs> any moment, day, any moment now. And it, it's got to happen. And um, they said, oh, well, we can't really tell you. I said, Here are the dates. I need to know. You know, you figure out with the agents. It all worked out, but you know. Well, dice que eh, fue un gran trabajo porque primero se grabó ahí en Nueva Orleans, donde él vive, entonces que pudo dormir en su propia cama y que era gente muy linda y muy joven y que se decía que podía haber algún tipo de lío en el set, pero que no pasaba esto porque sabía que si se metían en problemas mataban a sus personajes y que esto también fue lo que le pasó a él. Que él dijo tenía otras ofertas de trabajo, entonces él sabía que en algún momento su personaje iba a terminar muriendo y todo el tiempo iba y le decían a los productores, che, ¿me van a matar? ¿no me van a matar? Y ellos le decían, bueno, no sabemos, todavía no te podemos decir mucho, pero fue como una negociación entre representantes. People uh, here is praising your hair. After all the things that you said, they are, they are happy. They are, it's okay. Yeah, it, someone says, is, uh, you have a great hair. Thank you. <laughs> In fact, it's saying that the whole interview she was thinking about how good hair you have. <laughs> well, I won't cut it then. Yeah, this, this is Ma Male. Male is the name of the, of the, of the one that tells you That's, this. Yes, Male. <laughs> so, Brian, thank you very much. I know thank that you. You, you manage a few Spanish words. Maybe you can say goodbye to the viewers in Spanish. Are you willing to do that? <laughs> sure. Um, uh, muchas gracias. Uh, your... your uh, I can help mi, you. Eh? Mi corazón es grande porque tu amor. Yeah, your love is okay. El amor de ustedes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I appreciate. Lo aprecio. Eh, aprecio. Mi aprecio. Uh, your kindness. Su amabilidad. Aprecio su amabilidad. Gracias. <laughs> No, thank you. And for... I want to come to Argentina. Yeah, yo you vamos, to... yo voy a Argentina. Anytime. As soon as there are vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> Dice que viene tan pronto como haya una vacuna viene para Argentina. You have to come here because as you were reading all the messages that they were writing to you, not to me, they were all for you. They were all talking to you and praising your oh. work and asking you questions and saying you hi to you. Thank you for the kindness. Thank you for the time and Thank for you. all these happy anecdotes and funny anecdotes. It was so fun. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you all. And have a nice day. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. Fue la entrevista con Brian Bat. Gracias a todos los que estuvieron mirando, mandando preguntas. Perdón, pero me, creo que nunca había pasado que mandaran tantos mensajes. Fui leyendo las que pude. Aparte eran respuestas muy largas. Así que también tenía que hacer como ese proceso de traducción. Gracias. Eh, por lo pronto, nos veremos cuando haya otro vivo. Muchas gracias por bancar todo esto. Chao, chao.